During this session, there will be advice on when and how to check your skin and scar. We will be showing photographs of skin cancers. There will also be advice on how to check your lymph nodes and how to stay safe in the sun. Here are some key messages about your type of skin cancer. It is low risk and therefore you are unlikely to have any further problems from it. However, there is a small chance that it could cause more harm if it comes back. It is also important to know that now you have had one skin cancer, you are at risk of getting further skin cancers, which might be the same or a different type. We are now going to discuss what is skin cancer. Skin cancers are grouped into two categories, non-melanoma and melanoma skin cancers. We're now going to have a look at some pictures of different types of skin cancers. Firstly, let's look at basal cell carcinomas, or as you may have heard them called, rodent ulcers. Basal cell carcinomas usually grow in areas that have had more sun exposure. They may start off as a flat, red, scaly lesion that does not heal, as you can see in picture one. Some lesions can become raised and look like a bump, as in picture 2. Some may have a shiny surface, as you might be able to see in pictures 2 and 3. They usually take months to years to become obvious. They can also bleed or scab. Now we will move on to look at squamous cell carcinomas, or SCC for short. SCCs also usually grow on areas of skin that have had sun exposure. They often grow quickly over weeks to months. They are often painful. They can grow into a lump and can look like a volcano as seen in pictures 1 and 2. Sometimes they grow into a horn type shape as in picture 3. Rarely SCCs can develop around nails as in picture 4. Occasionally, SCCs can develop in a scar, wound or burn. Anything that does not heal should be assessed by a medical professional. There are also people who have a higher risk of skin cancers. These include people who have had an organ transplant or are having chemotherapy treatment. We will now look at some common precancerous lesions. Actinic keratosis and Bowen's disease are areas of sun damage which are precancerous. These usually do not cause any problems by themselves, but they can be itchy or sore, and only a small proportion become skin cancers. They are usually pink, scaly areas on sun-exposed parts of the body, such as the head, neck or limbs. They can be treated by your GP, often with medicated tr cream. Now we're going to look at moles and melanoma skin cancers, starting with how normal moles develop through our lifetime. Most moles appear in younger life, and normal behaviour is for them to gradually grow over time, and then to shrink with age. Therefore, we would be more concerned about new moles appearing from middle age onwards. Melanoma is a skin cancer which can develop from a mole or can appear on its own as a new lesion. This is a more serious type of skin cancer. There is an easy way to check your moles to work out if they are normal or not. We recommend you use the A, B, C, D, E, F technique to identify abnormal moles to be checked. If you notice any of these features, please see your GP. We will go through each of these features now. A stands for asymmetry. The mole on the left is considered healthy because it is symmetrical. You can fold it in half and it would match the other half. 
the mole number two is not symmetrical. If you folded this in half, it would not match and therefore could be an, a sign of an unhealthy mole. B is for border. Number one has what we call an even border. You can see very clearly where the mole stops and starts. However, number two shows an uneven border. It is less obvious where the mole finishes and if you look at the top where the red arrow is, it looks like the mole is spreading into the surrounding skin. This is an unhealthy sign. C is for colour. If you can see more than two colours in a mole, then this could be concerning. Number one shows a darker brown centre with a light brown around it. However, it is only two colours. In number two, you can see a number of colours. Black, brown, pink, white. This is a concerning feature. D is for diameter. A mole measuring more than six millimetres, which is approximately the thickness of a pencil, has a higher risk of developing melanoma. Please check these moles more carefully in case they get bigger. E is for evolution. Has your mole changed over time? This is important as change could mean it has changed into a melanoma. The arrows show a mole that is in the process of changing over time. It is becoming less symmetrical, uneven at the border, developing new colours, getting darker and growing bigger. F is for funny looking mole. If you have lots of moles then you can compare your moles to each other. If there is a mole that looks different to the others or a bit funny, then it's worth having this checked by your GP. As you can see from this picture, the mole with the arrow is larger, darker and a different shape to the others. A, B, C, D, E, F technique. Remember, if you notice any of these changes, please see a medical professional. There are some melanomas which are harder to spot. These can be in or around the nail, on the sole of the foot, palm of the hand, or where the sun doesn't shine. Picture two shows a melanoma on the sole of a foot. If you have darker skin, you are more likely to have this type, but it can also be found in fairer skinned people. Any bleeding lump is suspicious for skin cancer and sometimes melanoma will look like this and not be brown like in picture three. If you are suspicious that you have any of these signs then see your GP. As we age we often develop seborrheic keratosis, which are not cancerous. They are sometimes known as senile warts and they cause no harm. They usually have a stuck-on appearance and are often grey, brown or black. They also have a warty, waxy surface. Sometimes they can mimic a melanoma, so if you are worried, please see a GP as soon as possible. Let's now have a look at how to check your skin for signs that your skin cancer may have come back. We recommend that you feel and look at your scar once a month to check for any new lumps. If the area near the scar is breaking down and not healing as seen in picture one, or if there is a lump near or within the scar as in pictures two and three, this could be a sign that the cancer is coming back. See a medical professional as soon as possible if you notice any of these signs. It is also important to check the rest of your skin for new
Remember always to look at places on your body which are difficult to see. It is easier if there is someone who could help you check these areas. It helps to have good lighting, a long mirror and a hand mirror. It can be useful to take photographs of your skin to help with monitoring. Here are some tips for taking photos. Make sure there is good lighting. Use a pen to identify the area. First take a wide view photo that shows where it is on the body. Then take two close-ups with the ruler nearby, one with the flash and one without. We are now going to teach you how to check your lymph nodes, which are also known as glands. Lymph nodes can be found in several areas in the body, predominantly the head, neck, armpits and groin. The nodes help to filter out any infections or cancerous cells. Sometimes if you have a cold and sore throat, they can enlarge for a week or two temporarily. The lymph nodes are connected to tubes that run around the whole body with blood vessels. This is known as the lymphatic system. If the skin cancer travels from its original body area, it can be caught in the lymph nodes nearby, which makes them swell and enlarge. It is this growth that we want you to check for. You need to check your lymph nodes closest to where you had your skin cancer removed. If your skin cancer was on your head or neck, then you need to check your head and neck nodes. Likewise, if your skin cancer was on your arm, you would check your armpit. And if it was on your leg, you would check your groin. If your skin cancer was on your body, you would need to check all of the areas. We will now watch some videos to show you how to check your lymph node. In summary, you should check your lymph nodes once a month. Do not do it too often or you will not notice any changes. Remember to also look for raised lumps or bumps under the skin. However, lumps are not always visible. Check both sides of the body to know what is normal for you. Enlarged lymph nodes are not usually painful. They can often feel like a marble under the skin. If you notice any of these changes, you need to see a medical professional. We will now discuss the sun's effect on your skin and how to protect yourself so that you can reduce the risk of getting another skin cancer. Sun rays damage the skin which can cause skin cancer. Whilst it may feel healthy having a tan, it is actually a sign that the skin has been damaged and is trying to protect itself. Too much sun can also cause premature ageing. Using after sun lotion after getting burnt may make the skin feel better but it can't repair the DNA damage done. If you had sunburn as a child this can still have an effect on your skin at an older age. You should always be aware of the risk of sunburn if you're outside between approximately April and October in the UK. In other countries it may be different so you should check wherever you are. Now we will explain how to protect your skin. Wear a wide-brimmed hat which covers your face, ears and neck. Cover your skin with long sleeves and trousers or use sunblock with an SPF rating of 30 or 50 on any areas of exposed skin. Make sure the sunblock has a UVA symbol on the packaging. Apply sunblock 30 minutes before going into the sun and reapply every two hours or after swimming, sweating or toweling dry. Some sunblocks claim to last all day but we recommend reapplying regularly. Make sure your sunglasses have a CE mark and comply with European standards. It is best to avoid the sun between 11am and 3pm when the sun is strongest. Don't use sunbeds or UV nail dryers which are sometimes used in nail salons. Remember you can still get sunburnt in cloudy and cool weather when you are high up for instance in the mountains or near water, snow or concrete. You need to take extra care if you have pale or white skin, freckles, red or fair hair, tend to burn rather than tan, have many moles, have skin problems relating to a medical condition, have a family history of skin cancer. You can check the UV levels wherever you are on the Met Office website 
on some weather forecasts or on some smartphone apps. This gives you advice on the risk of sunburn and an idea of what level of protection you need. It is useful for this country when you don't know how strong the sun is and when you go abroad. Remember, you need to be careful when you are doing outdoor activities like gardening, walking or playing golf. This is a helpful way of remembering what you need to do to protect yourself in the sun. Our main source of vitamin D is through the effects of sunshine on your skin. You can also find vitamin D in certain foods such as oily fish, eggs and some fortified cereals. It is beneficial for your bones and general health. You only need short bursts of 10 minutes of sun on your skin a few times a week in the summer to achieve good levels. You make a lot less vitamin D in the winter months because the sun is not as strong. Because we are now asking you to protect your skin, you may need to think of other ways of getting vitamin D. You could consider having a vitamin D blood test at your GP surgery and they can advise on supplements. To summarise, you have had a skin cancer. There is a small chance of the skin cancer coming back. Because you have had one skin cancer, you are at risk of developing more. We have taught you how to check your skin and scar, how to examine your lymph nodes, how to protect your skin from the sun, seek medical attention if you find anything you are concerned about. The written information in your packs also includes the holistic needs assessment which is offered to all patients following a cancer diagnosis. It identifies any concerns that you may have including physical, spiritual, emotional, practical or financial. It is run by a team of cancer support workers. If this is something that you would like to pursue, then please contact the cancer support workers. First Steps is a morning event which is also offered to patients diagnosed with a skin cancer. It gives you practical advice regarding treatment and how aspects of your life such as exercise and diet can help. We'd be grateful if you could complete an evaluation form to help us improve this session.